Now, described by Forbes as Africa's most successful woman, Mo Abudu is a businesswoman, entrepreneur and philanthropist. She founded Ebony Life Television, Africa's first global multi-broadcast entertainment network, and in 2013 was named one of the, most, uh, the 25 most powerful women in global television. Abudu's African dream, however, began not in Africa, but here in the UK, where she went to school, and was built from her desire to rewrite Africa's story and highlight the rising economic importance of Africa. Alongside this, Abudu has also just produced her first film called 50, which chronicles the stories of four women coming of age. In a moment, I'll be chatting to Mo Abudu, but first, let's take a look at a clip from the film. If you call me one more time, I'm going to change my number. What kind of party planner are you? Your behavior is just totally unacceptable. Highly unprofessional. They're calling you neurotic, a drama queen. I want items that scream class. How many times must I say it? Money is not my problem, but how to spend it. Pray like you came here for a miracle. Why is God unhappy with me? Where has he cursed me? Don't leave me, please. How many of your get-rich-quick schemes have to fail before you wake up, Chiki? How many? You will respect me, young lady. I am your mother. Just go home. What home? Home to your wife. Well, Mo Abudu is here with me now. Welcome. Thank you so much, Simon. It's you have been to be here. It's lovely to have you here. In terms of you and who you are, the, I've seen you described as Africa's Oprah Winfrey, but you, you're not wildly happy about that, are you? <laughs> well, I, I don't want to say that I'm not happy about it. I mean, Oprah Winfrey is somebody that I have a huge amount of respect for. But what I often find is that the West always needs to find a reference point in the West to refer some, to, for, as a reference point for something that goes back to Africa. So therefore, I must be the Oprah Winfrey, or I must be the equivalent of something from the West that represents something in Africa. I admire her. I think she's done a lot of great things. We have some things in common. But I would like to be called Mo. <laughs> she is America's Mo Abudu, is probably oh, a better right. way of putting it. That's another way of putting it. As, as I said in the introduction, you actually grew up in this country. And how much of what's happened to you since is because of or despite that? I think a lot of it is because of that. You know, because, I mean, I had a wonderful childhood growing up here. But you find that those that have an understanding of Africa are far and few between. So I found myself defending who I was at any point in time. You were being asked... Against who? Well, against ordinary people that would ask you silly questions about, you know, can you speak African and, you know, do you live under a bridge or do you live in a hut or do you eat bananas for breakfast? I mean, the most ridiculous things, which... You can't blame anyone for thinking those things because maybe it's the perception, it's what they have become accustomed to and what they've seen in various forms of media that's out there. Um, I remember a few years ago um, hosting Moments with Mo, I stood at a street corner at Marble Arch and I said, when you hear the word Africa, what comes to mind? And I just randomly was asking and I heard everything from Mugabe to HIV to babies with flies on their faces to poverty, poverty you know, in that sort of accent. I mean, all sorts of, you know, that that's, that's, was the first thing that came to their mind. And my next question was, why is that? And their response was, it's what I read in the newspapers, it's what I see on television. So our journey really is to balance that perception and to say that th that reality may exist. It exists in all societies. But let's show the other reality. And that's what we've tried to do with the film 50. It's about looking at four glamorous middle-class women dealing with the same challenges that you find women in all parts of the world are dealing with. They're no different. I mean, I'm an African woman sitting right here with you today. So I can be as traditional as I want to be, and I can also be a global citizen and go out there and do the things that women globally are doing. Whilst you might find it frustrating, the response in other parts of the world, what about within Africa? Does Africa get just what's happening in Africa at the moment. I think Africa totally gets what's happening, but I think also the message needs to be reinforced because the, you know, when you look at the volume of media in terms of looking at what's happening in Africa, there are, don't forget that we're still flooded with millions of TV stations from the West. 
You know, I mean, I've conducted auditions where I have, you know, those coming for auditions and they've got American accents. They've never traveled out of Africa. That's the influence of television and, and the impact it has on those that are watching it. So, of course, that's why Ebony Life TV is there. It's to change that narrative. It's to give us confidence. It's to give the world confidence to show them the alternative. But it's also important for there to be more Ebony Lives. I mean, it's a journey. It's a struggle that I, it's, I can't do it alone. But at least I'm glad we've started that journey with Ebony Life Television and now with Ebony Life Films. And in terms of getting a Western audience to Ebony Life and to, and to all those things mm. that you're involved in, is there a willingness, willingness to accept it? I, I think there is. We have, we've had two screenings at the London Film Festival this week. Um, the first screening was at the VU in, in Leicester Square. It was mainly a Nigerian audience. But the second screening was at the Ritzy in South London, mm -hmm. and it was mainly a white audience. And the applause at the end was overwhelming. So for me, that, that it, once you have a story that can travel, once you're dealing with human aspiration and human feelings and passion and love and all of those things rolled into one, you're going to find that people are going to be able to relate to them. And I think the world really wants to understand us that little bit more better. They want to understand who we are today. And I think what 50 does, it shows you the African woman of today. Who is the African woman of today? If you Google it, you're going to find all kinds of strange images coming up. But we need to balance that. And that's very much the role. That's my passion. That's my journey. That's what I love doing. And that's what I want to keep doing for the longest time, is to tell that African story. Big focus on women. I think it's important to empower our women. There aren't enough women on TV globally anyway, let alone in Africa. So you know, definitely keep pushing female stories that will empower us and continue to grow us and share those stories with the rest of the world. Mo, it's great to meet you. Thank you very much, Mo Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Simon.